Hello everybody, my name is Barry Schwartz and this is the Search Buzz Video Recap. Today is Friday, July 8th, I believe, and this is the search news we covered over at the Search Engine Roundtable at seroundtable.com over the past week. Um, first up, I'm using iOS 10 on my iPhone, which is recording this with the mic. Hopefully it will work. If not, I'll be very upset and I'll do, redo it five times. But if you hear this, then it's actually working and I hope it works continuously. In any event, I posted our monthly July Google Webmaster report. You can definitely take a look at it. It pretty much goes through the major things that happened over the past month related to Google Webmaster topics, SEO and so forth. Um, so definitely take a look at it. I'm not going to recap it here. It was a fairly slow week um, in terms of reporting because of uh, July 4th, Independence Day in the U.S., but um, definitely take a look at this so you can catch up on the past month, at least, of what's going on. Um, Google's John Mueller said it this morning in a Google webmaster hangout that although Google has not confirmed any updates recently in the search algorithm it doesn't mean that Google's not updating their search algorithms in fact they probably are because he said the Google engineers are not on vacation they're not just lounging around doing nothing they definitely are making search quality better and improving things over time um, he said the Google's always improving the search results in the search algorithm because you have not seen an announcement that nothing is happening it doesn't mean nothing's happening um, and he goes on, so definitely take a look at that. Talking about Google updates, John Mueller also said this morning that Penguin 4.0, the next real-time Penguin release that we're expecting to happen months and months and months and months ago, is still not live, even though some people think it was or went live this past two, week or two. It is not live. He said, no, nope, it's not live and I don't have a date for you. So no Penguin 4.0 update for you yet. Google had a search console bug this morning where it sent out, at least to me, several notifications of re-verifications of Google search console profiles. Uh, John Mueller um, confirmed it and basically said, don't worry. Um, basically what happened was the verification file fell out. And you can actually see that if you go to your search console verification details, you'll see verification file fail, 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 fail. And then last night, 14 hours ago, it actually um, succeeded. And John Mueller said in a, in a Twitter post, FYI, we had an issue with the search console verification recently. And we sent out a bunch of emails, double check the account, but don't panic. And you see, you want to basically check the verify numbers <coughs> are the right ver verified orders in the account. John Mueller also addressed it this morning in the Hangout. Um, so again, if you got that, do not panic. It should be okay, but just double check that the right people are verified and the wrong people are not. Google also had a Search Console bug as well, specifically with apps, um, and it may impact the index count as well as the search only error report, where, John, uh, where they basically tell me of a bookkeeping error. Um, the specific error says some apps may see a drop in the number of pages indexed and the number of index errors. This is due to a bookkeeping error on our part of data that now shows a more accurate number accounts of pages that have been indexed. This change does not affect your impressions or click counts. Um, okay, so it impacts this report specifically. I didn't see any changes, so I'm okay, but there may be some app owners that have some, seen some changes there. Google is testing dropping out the estimate number of search results found for a Google query. So if you do a search, typically what you get is this about results over here, where it says about 71 that million results in 20.26 seconds. But now, sometimes Google's actually testing removing it, where it doesn't show you that result again. Honestly, I think they should remove it. It's probably more event than anything. It's not accurate. Google has told us not to look at it. So they probably should remove it, but uh, we'll see what happens over time. I, I doubt they will remove it. Um, Google's also testing sandwiching the first result for some queries in a line separator or line separators. They're sandwiching in between two different line separators. Um, Glenn Gates by this, so you can see like the line separators there, or the line separators here. Um, let me see if I can bring it up. Um, so let's do a search, maybe it'll come up on the iPad. And what you'll see is, well, it's not really so noticeable here because of the old interface. And you see the, the search estimates are not in this interface. Um, but again, um, it looks like it was testing different UIs and constantly testing different UIs, which is not uncommon, as you, if you ever watch this video, you see we're constantly reporting about Google user interface changes. Um, Google AdSense has canceled a massive number of accounts over the weekend, specifically on July 4th. Basically, what happened was Google went through all their old accounts and said, hey, if you haven't been active in years and years, you haven't logged in, you haven't used it, you haven't got any dollars or impressions or whatever in years, we're going to go ahead and cancel your account. If you want to reactivate it, go to Google and, and AdSense and re-sign up. But Google sent out these notifications to people. Um, and here's another example, your account has been canceled, closed because you're inactive and 
initially the, the emails were just saying your account was canceled, and then afterwards they actually claimed why it was canceled because it hasn't been active. Uh, lots and lots of complaints over the July 4th weekend. Google said that contact information specifically within the search on your webpage doesn't impact the organic, pure organic search results. John Mueller said, um, basically, normal web search, for, but for normal web search, I don't think we look at things like contact information on a web page. There isn't a ranking signal specifically for contact information on a web page. Of course, local results um, and other types of results may impact that. Because I personally, he hates it when he can't find contact information or way to contact the webmaster or the owner of the website because it's a bad user experience. But according to him, there is no organic ranking signal for having a contact information on the page outside of obviously local search, which he didn't mention. Google, John Mueller also said you do not have to disavow links that are pointing to your site that may be irrelevant. So this webmaster said I had a large e-commerce site and now we had hundreds and hundreds of products, now we only have a few products. And my SEO agency disavowed all the links pointing to the old pages because they were irrelevant anymore. Um, and John Mueller was like, no, you don't have to disavow links pointing that are from web pages that are irrelevant. You just gotta disavow links that are problematic when you think that are gonna hurt you, spammy links. And that means bad spammy links from that are manipulative and that are paid and so forth, but you don't have to disavow just links you earned over the years, even if they're not necessarily relevant. So it's companies change, sites change, and so forth, and you don't have to go ahead and disavow those links. Google also shared a basic concept, not really related, the context is kind of out of context, but it really applies and I think it's great um, to share. And basically said, John Mueller said, yes, one URL equals one piece of content. And that applies to everything. You always want to have make sure that you have one URL for one piece of content. You don't want to try to put all your content on one URL. You don't want to have duplicate URLs for the same piece of content and so forth. It's a good concept to know, of course, with mobile and HTTPS and redirects and canonicalization, that's all related to all this. But at the same time, the basic premise here is one URL equals one piece of content. This is more co talking context with using hreflang and internationalization. But again, it's a good basic SEO principle. Um, Google also said, that search engines um, tend to not support the web pages that are dependent on using the hashtag or the you know, pound symbol. If your web page uses that and using Angular or different Ajax JavaScript techniques to generate um, the page content based on that, search engines typically won't go ahead and use that. You have to make sure to use that to HTML5 mode or other, other things like the um, HTML5 history API instead to get Google to actually index that content. Um, Google said, of course, breaking your head, um, HTML may go ahead and make HR unrecognizable as well as canonical, uh, unrecognizable and other information. So Google won't show you errors because it's not looking for HRF language that's broken. Broke so just keep that in mind. One of the more common things where HRF language or canonicalization do not work with Google is when the head element is actually broken. And finally, Google said that changing sitemap URL location doesn't really impact crawling or ranking or anything, it's just another place for Google to find or to find new content and so forth. So in any event, thanks for, so much for listening to Search Buzz Video Recap. My name again is Barry Schwartz, this is Search News we covered over at the Search Roundtable at seeingoutpeople.com over the past week. Today again is Friday, July 8th, 2016, and I'll see you guys next week. Just so you know, there was one issue where it activated Siri while I was talking, so hopefully it works well. I'll have to patch the two parts together, which I've done before, and hopefully everything will be good. Thank you so much and have a great weekend. Bye.